Hi guys, today's story is called Three Hens and a Peacock. It's written by Lester Laminac. Three Hens and a Peacock. Look at those faces they're making. I wonder why they have such weird looking faces. How do you think they're feeling? Hmm. This guy, I think, he looks kind of mad, doesn't he? And these guys look like they don't know what's happening. So let's read the story and see what happens. Three hens and a peacock. Three hens and a peacock. Hmm, what's the setting of the story? I bet you said a farm, didn't you? Things were quiet on the Tucker's farm. The cows chewed their cud, the hens clucked and pecked and laid their eggs. The old hound stretched out on the porch, watching and listening. Once in a while, someone would stop to buy tomatoes or corn, perhaps a quart of milk. Nothing unusual happened there until... That peacock showed up. The cows and the hens and the old hound kept right on doing what they'd always done. But that peacock had never lived on a farm. He had no idea what to do. So he spread his fancy feathers and set to shrieking. Eventually, the peacock wandered down to the road. When cars whizzed by, he shook his feathers and cried out in his loudest voice. Of course, stop, folks stopped by to look. Day after day, more folks stopped to admire the peacock, and they all bought tomatoes and corn, eggs and milk. Business on the Tucker's farm was booming. Everyone seemed happy to have visitors stopping by. But trouble was brewing in the hen house. The hens were squawking and clucking and flapping their wings. We do all the work around here. I'd like to see that peacock lay one single egg. Exactly, he just struts around screaming. I suppose fancy feathers are more important than laying eggs. So how do you think the hens are feeling? They're feeling mad. That lazy peacock gets all the attention and we do all the work. Uh-oh, peacock is down here listening, isn't he? He doesn't look too happy. The peacock had heard every word. For days he moped about, moaning and groaning, I wish I could be more useful around here. Humph, clucked one hen. The others ruffled their feathers. The old hound stretched and slowly raised his head. Why not let the peacock stay here to be useful while you hens take to the glamorous job down by the road? The three hens began clucking to each other. What a wonderful plan. Yes, it's a fabulous idea. Oh, ladies, we simply must fancy up our feathers tonight and nothing but our brightest beads, bangles, and bows. We'll stop traffic for sure. Why, you girls know I can strut with the best of them. The peacock perked up. Let's do it, he declared. 
Tomorrow I'll stay here, sit on a nest, and cluck. And we'll get all gussied up, said the hens. We'll be so glamorous. So it looks like they have a plan. At sunrise the next morning, the hens strutted down to the road. Look, they're all fancy. The peacock marched right to the hen house and poked his head inside. The hens flocked by the road waiting for a car. When they saw one approaching, they clucked and squeaked and flapped their wings and a flurry of feathers, but every car whizzed right on by. The peacock sucked in his tummy and wiggled from left to right, trying to squeeze through the tiny hen house door. His front half was in, his back half was out. Down by the road, those hens tried every chicken trick they knew. Still, no, claw, no car stopped. Finally, the peacock made it into the hen house. He held his breath and pushed with all his might, but no matter how hard he tried, he could not lay a single egg, not one. The old hound stretched out on the porch watching and listening. What's that peacock doing in the hen house? asked Farmer Tucker. Who knows, said Mrs. Tucker. And what are those hens doing down by the road? Not a one of them is up here laying eggs. Well, the way things are going, we aren't likely to have anyone buying eggs today, said Farmer Tucker. We need that peacock down there stopping cars. When the peacock heard that, he smiled his biggest smile you ever saw on a bird's face. I am helping, he thought. He squirmed back and forth until he popped out of the cramped hen house. Then he strutted off to find the hens. The exhausted hens were all clucked out. Every feather was out of place. What a day! We couldn't get a car to stop. It's true why most of them don't even slow down. Look how tired they look. So the, whoops, pages are stuck again. The peacock met the hens as they trudged up the road. I can tell you, I'm no good at laying eggs, he said. I'm just not meant for it. One hen nodded. I put on my stellar strut and even I couldn't stop a single car. She said, I have to hand it to you, fancy feathers. Your job is harder than it looks. The other hens agreed. The peacock looked relieved. So the hens marched back, marched back to the hen house. The peacock strutted down to the road. The old hound stretched out on the porch watching and listening. And things were quiet again on the Tucker's farm. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story of three hens and a peacock. Ms. Brunce is gonna share her screen now for a minute. I have a question that I would like for you to answer. So here is my question. What lesson did the animals learn by switching jobs? What lesson did the animals learn by switching jobs? 
Write your answer in your notebook, and I hope you enjoyed today's story. I will see you next time. Bye, guys. I love you.